Brown v. Board of Education came about as a result of the decision from the Supreme Court case Plessy v. Ferguson. Plessy v. Ferguson upheld the constitutionality of racial segregation in public facilities as long as the facilities were separate and equal in quality. However, many public institutions, specifically schools, were segregated but far from equal. Oftentimes, schools with people of color were under-resourced while schools with white children were highly funded. This prompted people to take action for change and desegregate educational facilities for the purpose of providing equal opportunities to children of all races. The case Brown v. Board of Education started off with a young African-American girl named Linda Brown. She had to walk a long, long time just to get to an African-American school when she had a full white school right down the block. She went to the courts to request that she could go to the all-white school, but they rejected her using the separate but eth doctrine. The all-African-American school also taught very basic education and was not the best quality school in comparison to the all-white school that was just down the street. At this time, racial segregation was at its peak, and the NAACP was fighting intensely with lawsuits trying to get this separate but equal thrown out. So naturally, when they saw Brown v. Board of Education, they immediately picked up the case and helped them win. The court case was decided on May 17, 1954. The separate but equal doctrine was established and founded by the Jim Crow laws, which basically caused segregation to be a legal thing and very much segregated African Americans and whites. The situation started when Linda Brown was denied entry to an all-white elementary school, and this caused her father, Oliver Brown, to file a case against the Board of Education of Tobacco. In a unanimous decision, the Supreme Court ruled that separate but equal schools for racial minorities is inherently unequal, violating the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. This landmark decision overturned Plessy v. Ferguson which established the idea of separate but equal. Chief Justice Earl Warren delivered the opinion of the unanimous court. He held that separate but equal schools are unequal and therefore violate the protections of the Equal Protection Clause in the 14th Amendment. Also, he reasoned that the segregation of public education based on race instills a sense of inferiority that had a hugely detrimental effect on the education and personal growth of African-American children. He based much of his opinion on information from social sciences rather than court precedent. The decision also used language that was accessible to non-lawyers because he felt that it was necessary for all Americans to understand the logic of the case. Supreme Court held that separate but equal facilities are inherently unequal and violate the protections of the Equal Protections Clause of the 14th Amendment. The court reasoned that the segregation of public education based on race instilled a sense of inferiority that had a hugely detrimental effect on education and the personal growth of African American children. After the case of Brown v. Board, there were still concerns with black people going to all white schools, which led to Little Rock 9 and eventually the integration of all schools.